The lockdown is extending the recession. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Keep working on your shine of coffee and let's have a look at this article from the ABC discussing the Melbourne lockdown and its effect on the pandemic recession. They think it could last all year, economists are warning. Because remember, technically we are not actually in a recession yet. We need to have two quarters of negative GDP growth. Two quarters. We've had one and... I mean, you'd be insane to think we're not getting another one. But the concern is now that the Melbourne lockdown, the new one, is going to extend it. It's going to extend it. And I can't say I'm at all surprised. Melbourne-based NAB chief economist Alan Oster has been in the profession for more than 40 years. And he's seen a fair few economic crises in his time. But nothing compares to this. He can't even visit his son, who lives more than five kilometers away. Just think about that. Um, just the economic impact that's going to have everyone. It's, it's, it's going to decimate the economy. In terms of sharpness in the declining activity, this makes the recession in the 80s and 90s look like child's play, Mr. Oster said. Unemployment did get to 11% in 1990 recession, but it took two years to get there, and we're pretty much essentially there now. If you look at the Roy Morgan figures, the unemployment and underemployment, about a quarter of the workforce is either unemployed or underemployed. I'd hate to see what that would look like if we were to add all the JobKeeper figures to that. The National Australia Bank will update its forecast next week after the result of its latest business conditions survey. But Mr. Oster already knows what to expect. I would expect conditions, or certainly confidence, to go deeply south compared to where it was. And let's bring up business confidence you can see here. Well, it had picked up in the last data that came up. It slightly picked up. We'll have to see. Well, it's, it's going to plunge. It's going to plunge. Who's going to be confident in this environment? Are any of you confident in this environment? All the poor Victorians can't even go five kilometers away from their home. I know someone I was looking on Facebook, you know, he lives on the water. So half of his five kilometer circle, he's allowed to travel is in the water. So he's kind of screwed. Recession could last a whole calendar year. It's generally accepted that Australia recorded two success in sorry, it gener- it's generally accepted that Australia recorded two successive quarters of negative growth in the March and June quarters, even though the latest national account numbers won't be unveiled for another month to confirm it. But now NAB's number crunchers aren't sure the recession will end at June. Was there ever any anticipation that it would end it? Was was that even realistically considered? NAB has already downgraded its September quarter GDP forecast from 3% growth to 1%. I guess they were after the federal government's July budget update. It now thinks the blow to Victoria, which accounts for nearly a quarter of Australia's GDP, could be between 10 and 15% in the three months to September. The likelihood of that prolonging the national recession is 50-50, according to Mr. Oster. A big hit to the construction sector in Victoria could prolong the recession. We could have three quarters of negative growth, he warns. That is not our current forecast, but it could well and truly happen. The Grattan Institute's Danielle Wood is even more certain of a prolonged recession because of the events in Victoria. There was already talk that the December quarter could be negative anyway because of the withdrawal of government support. And I think that's even more likely now, she said. So you could be looking at a recession that stretches for the whole calendar year. Deloitte Access Economics partner, Nikki Hutley agrees. We'll go in harder and deeper. It's important to hear that the economy will recover, but we're really in a perilous position. Last time Australia's economy went backwards for four consecutive quarters was between September 82 and June 83, which ultimately sealed the fate of the Fraser government, ousted in early 83 by Bob Hawke. So government support is keeping the economy alive. This is the thing. This is this is why when people are arguing about jumping in the how in the housing or housing will come back up, you can't really say that that's accurate considering the amount of support that the government is throwing at the economy. And unless they're going to keep that support forever, I mean, can you see JobKeeper going on forever, guys? JobSeeker Plus continuing forever? So both Miss Hutley and Miss Wood 
see events in Victoria underlying the importance of maintaining adequate government support beyond September and extending the current level of assistance to Victoria at least. The support measures are working, Ms Hutley said. We know from the, the bank data that all the support measures are being spent. They're keeping the economy alive. In July, the federal government forecast a six-week lockdown in Melbourne, which would be a $3.3 billion hit to the national economy. According to NAB, a three-and-a-half-week extension would increase the loss to $5.2 billion, or 0.3% of GDP, but it could be worse because the restrictions have been tightened and there are indirect impacts from an extended lockdown. It's the psychological impact which Mr. Oster worries the most. If we get signs in our business survey that it's affecting confidence and forward orders outside of Victoria, that could prolong the recession, he says. I bet you it will. I bet you it will. It's people saying this could happen in New South Wales as well. The sort of second round effects you just can't be sure of. Sydney-based Miss Hutley agrees it isn't just the virus that's highly contagious. The effect on confidence is huge. Yes, yes, they're right. The spread of confidence, the lack in confidence, I mean, business confidence, consumer confidence. Look at that plunge, everyone. It chopped back up and it went back down again. New South Wales is on a knife knife's edge. When people are nervous, they don't spend money and businesses don't invest, so the flow on impact will be very large. Oh, I think people are spending money. I think it's all going into bullion and silver. People are buying food. There's talk of food shortages now. People are worried. People are scared of the future. Melbourne is also home to the country's biggest container terminal and Australia's major transport and logistic, logistics hub. While activities there will continue, the tighter restrictions on travel will slow down the process and add to supply delays on a whole range of products headed to businesses across the country. The Australian Industry Group's chief economist, Julie Toth, says, for example, most of the workers at Port Melbourne probably live further away and they'll be caught in the travel restriction bottlenecks across the city as they attempt to get to work. In practical terms, the movement restrictions slow everything down. So closed childcare was slash working hours. The decision to close childcare will also significantly hamper Victoria's ability to service the rest of the nation and its own economy, according to Miss Wood. Employees relying on the care work on that care work 25 to 30 hours a week on average. Now parents are going to have to find that time in their week to look after their children, she said. Most people can't rely on grandparents because of the health restrictions. If both part parents are working, they're probably going to have to cut back on hours. Miss Wood can see people dropping out of the workforce over and above what might happen because of the recession. Strangely enough, it might help keep a lid on unemployment, she adds, but it's not a great outcome from an economic perspective. In this July update, the federal government forecast a peak unemployment rate of 9.25% by December, but Mr. Oster thinks that now looks far too rosy. Although, although the NAB chief economist is reluctant to provide his own estimates, given the uncertainty around the situation. I would suspect unemployment will go pretty high and probably not peak until the March quarter. It's as far as he will go. Well, there you go. It won't peak until, we, until the support mechanisms are removed. You're going to lose JobKeeper. You're going to lose the mortgage holidays. Trading while insolvent is coming back. You know, director's liability is coming back in September. What's that going to do to businesses? Will there be businesses that shut down because of that? Will they have to continue JobKeeper after March? Will the banks extend their mortgage holidays for another six months? In April, as the lockdowns were in full swing, RBA Governor Philip Lowe delivered an extremely optimistic narrative about the economy's future. But he did also warn that if there was a second wave, all bets would be off. Even though the second wave is so far only hitting one state, even if, if it remains confined, there is a danger Victoria will drag the nation's economy along with it in a renewed tide of pessimism. So there we have it, guys. There we have it. Concerns that unemployment won't peak until March, and this could be a year-long recession. What's your takeaway? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below.
Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.